In this section, we're going to look at two different kinds of uncertainty, absolute and relative. And so absolute uncertainty is literally the error by itself. So maybe you make a reading on a burette, and that reading is plus or minus 0.02 milliliters. Okay, so that is the absolute uncertainty. So perhaps you make a measurement and it's 12.35 milliliters. And so your absolute uncertainty would allow you to write it as 12.35 plus or minus 0.02 milliliters. In place of absolute uncertainty, it is often useful to calculate relative uncertainty. So we compare our uncertainty value to the actual measurement itself. And the relative uncertainty here, we just divide the absolute uncertainty by the actual measurement itself. So we're essentially calculating what fraction is the uncertainty compared to the result. In this case here, this fraction here is quite low. It is 0, 0, 0,02. Notice it's a dimensionless number. We can also calculate the percent relative uncertainty. And we basically just change the fraction into a percent, so it's essentially just 100 times by the relative uncertainty. So in this case here, it would be 0.2%. Now, why do we worry about such a thing? Well, if you look at the absolute uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty doesn't change as you make any measurement down a burette, whether you're at the zero end or the 50 mil end, the absolute uncertainty is exactly the same, 0.02 milliliters in either direction. But if you compare the relative uncertainty, it's going to depend upon the measurement. So for instance, if you are plus or minus 0.02 milliliters at a measurement of 5 milliliters, that's a relative uncertainty or percent relative uncertainty of 0.4%. But now if you take that same absolute uncertainty at a measurement of say 50 milliliters, that corresponds to a greatly reduced, a order of magnitude reduction in the percent uncertainty. Now it's 0.04%. So it's 10 times smaller. So what does that suggest? That suggests that if you can't control the absolute uncertainty, then you are better off minimizing the relative uncertainty. So that means that you need to make sure your measurements, your titers, your volumes are as large as possible so that the absolute uncertainty corresponds to a smaller percent relative uncertainty. This is a way you could actually design a better experiment. A practical example of this is perhaps you have an analytical balance and you've got an analytical balance and it's got an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.3 milligrams. So what does that mean in terms of relative uncertainty? Well, if you are measuring a mass of say 50 milligrams, so 0 0.0500 grams, then the relative uncertainty is 0.6%. If you take 0.3 milligrams compared to 50 milligrams, that is a percent uncertainty of 0.6%. Now instead, if you are weighing a 50 gram sample with that absolute uncertainty of 0.3 milligram, that now translates into an error, a percent error here of 0.0006%. So notice we have reduced it by a factor of a thousand by essentially using a thousand times more of our sample. So even though the absolute uncertainty hasn't changed, we can reduce the relative size of it by using a larger sample. So we can design an experiment and we can decrease the relative uncertainties by making sure our absolute values here are much larger.